Hi and welcome to another video in my Photoshop Essential Skills series. Everything you need to know to get you well and truly started on your journey of discovery with Photoshop. Now today I want to demonstrate for you the power of the Perspective Warp tool and how it completely changes the perspective of a building. Now don't forget if you're a fan of the printed page don't forget to check out the more area under the video for any ebook or work files that might accompany the video. If there's some links there, just click on them and you'll download them. OK, let's dig in. So what is Perspective Warp? Well, it's a tool that was introduced in the CC version of Photoshop. And it allows me to enter a three-dimensional world and change the perspective of an image as though I'd actually moved myself and my camera. That's pretty amazing. OK, so let's dig in and I'll show you how it works. First thing I want to do is to make a, a new layer. And I can do that clicking on the new layer icon. I can right click on the background layer or I can use the keyboard shortcut which is my favourite of Control and J or Command and J if you're on a Mac. OK next we need to go into the Perspective Warp command itself and that lives in the Edit menu. So we're going to go up to the Edit menu and down to Perspective Warp. And here you can see I've got my little Perspective Warp tool. Now let's have a look up here in the tool options bar and we can see we've got some options and we have two different modes. We've got the layout mode which is what we're in at the moment where we're actually going to construct as grids and we've got the warp mode so that when we've finished all our grids then we enter warp mode and we can actually do some warping. There's some options here for actually lining things up a little bit so this is automatically straightened and we've got an automatically level out things. Uh, we've got an auto warp which basically does a bit of these two together. And then we've got, we've, we can remove all the quads if we decide we want to start again. Or we can cancel it all together. Or we can click the tick to accept what we've done and, re and bring us back to Photoshop. OK, let's create us first grid. And what I'm going to do is just click and drag and then let it go. And you can see we've now got us grid. I can click in the middle of this grid and I can move it around. If I click on a corner point, I can move the corner point anywhere. And if I want to be really precise, I can use the arrow keys for moving these corner points about one at a time. If I hover over one of the sides, I can click and I can drag and distort the actual quad itself. If I hold the shift key down and I drag a side, I actually maintain the perspective. So you can see that I'm going right out into the distance. I'm completely maintaining the perspective of that particular quad. OK, let's just reset that for the sec. And we'll make a start. So I'm going to need two quads to be able to map this out. There's obviously the perspective of this side, the front, and there's the perspective of the side. So let's drag out a grid to start with. And I'll just drag it up into the air so we've got plenty of it on show and we'll drag it over and I'll just try and line it up around that corner of the building. Again I can move the corner point just to get it until I think it's bang on. And then what I've got to try and do is I'm going to try and line up these lines with the perspective of each side. So I'll just move that in a little bit and then I'm going to look at the this line up here and let's say from that top corner point here, it should line up with somewhere down here, but it doesn't. So I'm going to change the perspective. So we'll, we'll drag that down a little bit. And we'll bring that down a little bit so it more or less matches. And on this one, we've got, again, we've got a little bit of a mismatch, but I'm going to use this line to try and line up with this, this line in the center of the building. So I'm going to drag that up a little bit and bring it back. So I'm just trying to match up the perspective and here we've just nudged that up a little bit so I'll drop that down and pull that up and uh, we'll see if we can just move that a little bit. There we go. Okay I'll leave that as it is for the minute and now I'm going to go and draw a second grid. Now I can draw the second grid anywhere but what I want to do is to lock it to this grid here. So to do that, I need to get close enough so that I don't want the pin, but I just want to get close enough that I've, I've still got that icon there. And if I drag, you'll see that the two center lines go blue. And that means they're going to snap together when I finish. So I'll drag this over 
and let go and they'll snap together. So now I've got the front of this building with this grid and I now need to map this, the side of the building with this grid. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just drag these down and try to get some kind of handle on the perspective. So I want to be somewhere like that. I'll drag the bottom up a little bit and that's not far off actually. Let's take that down again. And you just may, may need to jiggle these a little bit to get them right. But that's not bad. Let's give it a little bit more there. We'll just pull it over just to line it up with that corner there because I want that corner to be a little bit of a datum point. This is going from the bottom to the bottom. That's not bad. That looks pretty good as well. Let's just take that up a little bit and just swing it out a little bit. And I'm going to call that done. Well, not quite. Let me just pull that back in a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to call that done. And now I can go up and I've got my choice of layout and warp. Well, I've completed my layout now, but what I want to do is now go into warp. Now, while I'm in warp, now you'll see the center grid disappears, but it leaves me all my outside points. And now if I wanted to, to correct the verticals, I could just click the vertical. That's all right. Or I can try the horizontal. Mm, OK, in this case, that's not very good. And I could try the all and that corrects for vertical and horizontal. But in this case, yeah, they're a bit of a nonsense then. OK, but what I want to do now is to change the perspective. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hover over this center point here, this center line, and I'm going to hold the shift key down and you'll see it turns yellow. And if I click on it, that will stay yellow. And this means now that these two grids are locked together in the perspective of the building. So if I now hover over either of these two points at the end of the yellow line and drag, I can actually move the perspective of the building. Oh my God, look at that. Is that not cool? So I can show a little bit more of the side of the building or I can show a little bit more of the front of the building. Now this is a transform thing. It is squishing the pixels. So you can't go mad. You can't go too far, but you can do some serious changing in perspective. So I'll just dip it down a little bit so I can show, let's say, a bit more of the front of the building and just put some little tweaks in. Just tweak it a little bit there and tweak it a little bit there. Ah, I think I'm going to accept that as OK. Now to accept that as OK, I'm just going to click the tick and that's going to bring me back to Photoshop. Now, the reason that I had this, this uh, that I had an extra layer um, at the beginning was to show the before and after. So now if I turn this top layer off, you can see that that's the before and that's after. So you can see now I've, I've spun that building round a little bit in 3D space so I can see more of the front than I can the back. I think that is really cool. Now, the other reason I leave a layer in is because if I turn this bottom layer off, you'll see that the result of all that squishing and squashing is that I've got some pixels missing. It's actually deformed the edge of the uh, image inwards. Now, normally, if I just leave that layer on, it does fill the gaps in quite nicely. Um, in this case, no, I've probably got a little bit of a problem up here. So what I'd have to do is to fill that in with content aware fill. Or in this case, let's just have a go with, ooh, let's have a go with a healing brush. So I'm just going to hold the Alt key down and click and then try and patch a little bit up there like that because the clouds are pretty even. Alt and click again. We'll just try and cover them bits in so that they match. And I think there was a bit at this side as well. There we go. I think our work here is done. Well, that's it for this video, Photoshoppers, on using the Perspective Warp tool. I do hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment under the video for me. Or share it with a friend. Or two. Don't forget to check out the more area under the video for the link to any download files or free ebooks. And please 
click the subscribe button so when I upload a new video you are the very first person to know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.